Brian Lacey Brian and Lacey and Dizzy Farrell yeah. having a great battle inside because what Brian Lacey is finding is Dizzy Farrell is very, very strong with the blocking ball. Even though Brian Lacey is fast, he's finding it very hard physically to match it. Derek Brennan here trying to profit by that pass inside by John Finn, which is a great deal more incisive. He's right down, it's outside the large parallelogram, and it's going to be a free in to Kildare. Here's where they should draw level. Well, John Finn screwed that pass with the outside of his boot, and there was a very nice run through here by Porrick Brennan of Sarsfields, and Coleman Gobbins has his name reported. Goggins from Ballantyre St. John's. So it should be John Doyle once again to take it. As you can see, fans still coming in here, many delayed by the traffic jams. And that's put over the bar, and that's a second one from a free. And it's Dublin three, Kildare three. Settling down to be a real ding-dong battle. This time the goalkeeper, David Byrne, goes short to Paul Curran. Dermot Early's after it. No real contact, the referee decides. Played inside to Jim Gavin. Dodging the challenge there by Fennin. Inside for Desi Farrell. Good pass, Jonathan McGee. Thundering through. Should have been a score. It was a very good chance, but he was fouled. And it's going to be a free from the 13-meter line. Well, let's watch him going through once again. Yes, there was a late challenge there, possibly by John Finn. And it's a 13-meter free. Good run through the center by McGee from Kilmacud Brooks. And it's put over the bar by Jim Gavin. His first free, his first point. And the Hill happy with Dublin's performance so far. They lead by just a point. Christy Byrne. Reaching. Willie McCreary. Glenn Ryan. Taken up here by Porrick Brennan who switched corners. Goggins has gone across after it. And that time the foul is by Paddy Christie. Eddie McCormack thinking about taking him itself but uh, he decides in the end he's going to leave it for John Doyle this is where the uh, foul was committed rugby style tackle not permitted in the Gaelic code however Eddie McCormack and Ronan Sweeney have switched positions as this ball is played short inside for John Finn played back out again and then they say to Finn look you take it Easy one for Davy Byrne. Then quickly looking around to see who was ready for the pass. It's Paddy Christie. Out to Pader Andrews. Sennon Connell. Fed ahead by Jim Gavin to Paul Collins. Shouldered by Glenn Ryan. Good support play. Here comes Kieran Whelan. He's a terrific athlete. Glenn Ryan's back after him. Three Kildare men around him. Back to Desi Farrell. Dublin looking to stretch their lead. Every attack so important. Farrell trying to tease and torment the Kildare rear guard. Has options. A really acute angle. And in the end, they make absolutely nothing of it. Well, he's been hampered by injuries for much of the last uh, couple of months. Here he just ran out of options into a cul-de-sac. Couldn't do much about it. Tried to play it across the face of goal, but put it wide. Roland Sweeney has now drifted out around the middle of the field. Eddie McCormack's got in towards full forward. Here's Paulick Brennan now popping up on the left. But it'll be Dublin's sideline ball. Coleman Goggins taking it. Kept in there by Colly Moran. Under the free to Dublin. Well, Dublin with the player down injured, it's Coleman Goggins. And Noel McCaffrey is in to attend to him. Coleman today playing in his fourth championship match. It's 
do very much in his debut season. Referee taking the opportunity of taking some water on board because it's a very humid afternoon here. And just in case, a sub or two warming up. Nilo Donoghue there on the left-hand side. Both Coleman Goggins and Shane Ryan are having a really tough time against Ty Finnan and Torrey Green. These two boys for Kildare really know how to play. They get the ball and they're score conscious immediately. Seven points in the match so far. Dublin shading it. Vinnie Murphy feeding it out here. And it's kicked beautifully and it's put over the bar there by Colly Moran from Ballyboat to St. Enders. Lovely pass from Vinnie Murphy. Good hard work by the Dublin attack. He laid it out beautifully and Moran did the rest. So Kildare now finding themselves two points adrift and they've only scored three points in the opening 21-32 minutes of this half. They come forward again through Martin Lynch. Kieran Whelan chasing after him. Still it's Lynch. And in the end, he hops the ball a couple of times to Rami. And it's going to be a free out for Dublin. This is where Lynch was coming through there, but before all of that, the foul was committed. It uh, was a double hop. Paddy Christie giving it plenty of height. Good length as well. Ken Doyle out there trying to dispossess Jason Sherlock. And here comes Sherlock. Chased by the men in white from Kildare. And in the end, he says there was a dive taken, but the referee says not so. Free out. Kildare pressurised once again. Colly Moran once more. Trying to play the ball back towards... Jim Gavin to Brian Steins and he puts it over the bar. The man of the match from 13 days ago when he got three points in that game and really lured the things at midfield has done it again here. Nice little ball outside from Jim Gavin to Brian Steins and he blasted it between the posts. And Dublin lead by double scores. And Kildare will need to get something going pretty soon. Bad ball from John Doyle. Instead, it's Shane Ryan down to Brian Steins. Dublin, who haven't been champions of Leinster for five years. That's a great ball inside to Desi Farrell. Where was the marking? They were very late in getting to him, and Desi Farrell pops it over the bar, and there was nothing that Ronan Quinn could do about it. That was an amazing passage of play. The ball was high up into the air. Nobody was getting close on Desi Farrell. Finally, Ronan Quinn tried to get tight, but was never tight enough. That last passage in the play just illustrates the difference between the two teams. Martin then stole it up the field, lost position. Dublin got the ball, and an old rooter up the field by Dublin. Jason Sherlock nearly got it. They got a score for it. Again, a direct ball into the full forward and a great score. Just got the feeling that Dublin were to get a goal pretty soon. They might well be putting themselves out of reach of Kildare. That's the kind of danger Kildare are in right now. Paul Curran. In towards Jason Sherlock, he bounces off the turf. Ken Doyle has it. Hand pass towards Ronan Sweeney. Back once again to the number two. Willie McQuarrie. And a good block down by Jim Gavin. Did just enough to take the sting out of that, make it easier for Shane Ryan. Here comes Collie Moran. Confident looking approach, it curls beautifully, and that's a magnificent point. A superb kick. Two points now for Cully Moran. The Dublin fans in raptures at this stage, feeling this may well be their day. That was beautifully done. A magnificent kick. And Dublin lead by eight points to three. Some score. That terrific score now. And around midfield, Dublin are dominating everything that goes in there. They're either winning primary position or winning the breaks. And when they get it, they let it off first time into the forward line. And it's very, very hard to defend against that type of game. Dublin, or rather Kildare, are warming up Carol O'Dwyer and Brian Murphy. They realise at this early stage they're in serious trouble. Senan Connell sending it in towards Jason Sherlock. 
trying to get away from Ken Doyle. Bad pass. Kicked away. Out as far as Willie McCreary. Towards Eddie McCormick. Shane Ryan's alongside him. And the referee has decided it's going to be a free for Kildare because of a little push. That's beautifully into tight Fennin. Well, this is where Kildare need to show their true metal now. They've got loads of time, but they've got to get those scores. This one drops short. Paul Curran letting it bounce. Jonathan McGee. They work it out here to Kieran Whelan. Back towards Collie Moran. Two points to his credit so far. Inside was Jason Sherlock, pushed in the back. Ken Doyle, deemed to be the guilty party. Referee not standing for any kind of nonsense. And that concession of a silly free here, right in front of this goal area, is surely going to result in yet another point for Dublin. Vinnie Murphy is going to take it. Jason's done his bit. 23 or 4 metres out, right in front of the post. Sun coming out in Croke Park. And that's well directed. He's in there to get those uh, high balls, to make the breaks, to make the chances, to take the freeze. And he's made it 9 points to 3. And he's in serious trouble. Well, Brian Murphy's over there, Carlo Duar as well. They can use five substitutes. They've got to make changes pretty soon. We're only about seven and a half minutes to half-time, and Dublin are dominant. Kieran Whelan. Picked up here by John Finn. Anthony Rainbow. Dropping in over Polrick Brennan's head. Gathered in there by Shane Ryan for Dublin. Paul Curran. Typical Maisie run down along the flanks, taking it back from Stan and Connell. Dublin are really fired up for this match. Desi Farrell. Stan and Connell right in the corner. Played inside towards Jason Sherlock. Goal chance perhaps. Jason Sherlock fires it over the bar. Everything is going Dublin's way. It's their half, no question about that. And Kildare really will have it all to do. There's no win factor, it's just a case of willpower, and Jason Sherlock might well have been in for a goal. Ten points to three. Carol O'Dwyer is in, just waiting to see who's making way. It looks like it's Eddie McCormack who's taking the short trip to the dugout once again. So the manager of the son of the manager is in. And not before it's time for apps. Oh, without doubt, Kildare really have to do something about it at this stage. But it's real aggressive, first-time football by Dublin. And great movement all off the ball with our forwards. Just to see the movement of Jason Sherlock, he lets the people outside know where he wants the ball. Dublin are playing exquisite football. Vinnie Murphy, strongly built fellow. Back to Brian Steins. Oh. He won't be playing that one on the uh, video recorder tonight. This was a great chance to have notched up the 11th point. Vinnie Murphy, the provider. Not a good finish. Mister, he was trying to screw it on the outside of his boot over the bar. But really around midfield, Brian Stein and Kieran Whelan are really playing so well. And the inside forwards, their movement off the ball is terrific. Desi Farrell is very, very strong underneath the ball. And overall, Dormant Dublin are very, very aggressive. And they're getting 110% on all the breaks. So Kildare, at this stage, they'll really have to up their game. 10 times to 3, they'll have to get into it at this stage. Kildare have not scored for 13 minutes. Vinnie Murphy's back on his feet once again. But the pressure is coming towards that Kildare goal the whole time. Ronan Quinn out towards Willie McCreary to Dermot Early virtually an anonymous figure in this match so far Corey Brennan let it run on but it runs on favourably for the men in blue and navy John O'Leary back there giving the instructions John who played in 70 championship matches including 6 All-Ireland Finals and Nico knows all about the All-Ireland Final scene but his task of getting Kildare into the semi-finals at this stage is immense 
Here's Sen and Connell. Back to Paul Curran. Jason Sherlock running loose for the ball. Kildare absolutely confused in defence as to who's the, supposed to do what. And Stiles lets it drop short this time. He might have had two points in the last two attacks. It could be 12 points to three at this stage. Here comes Dermot Early. This is where he needs to show us what he's really capable of doing. Inside to Tyke Fennin, fouled. Free quickly taken to Martin Lynch. Kildare themselves needing scores. A goal would do nicely, but they may settle for a point and do in this particular instance. Martin Lynch getting his first. And you know, the two midfielders starting today for Kildare are among their scorers so far. And the other two points have come from freeze from John Doyle. The attack is simply not functioning. It looks as if there's no threat whatsoever from the Kildare attack. The only person that even looks like scoring is Ty Spinnan or Corey Brennan. Outside of that, there is no threat whatsoever in there. Just over three minutes to go to the half-time break. Willie McCreary battling it in there with Brian Steins. It's an intriguing battle because Brian likes to go forward as much as possible. Rainbow played forward towards Fennin. Taken instead by Powder Andrews. Shane Ryan. Jim Gavin here. A great run again by Desi Farrell. So took off the mark. Kildare have been ponderous. And this time Dublin get themselves a score. Or was it between the coast? The umpire, I think, initially was saying no. And then he raised the white flag. And there's a debate about it. Here it is again. Well, from that angle there, it's difficult to say, but the referee says, I had a pretty good view of it, and in my view, it was wide. It's getting heated inside there, and Vinnie Murphy's in the thick of it there with uh, goalkeeper Christy Byrne. frustrating at times for the Kildare players but they've simply been swamped by Dublin in the opening 33 minutes from our view here Ger I thought the ball was actually wide definitely I think he's got it right there but Dublin look much fresher and much hungrier than Kildare Kildare look a tired team and they're looking to each other to see who lifts the game there's nobody actually standing up and being counted and lifting the game for Kildare there it is again and yes the first thought was that it was definitely wide the referee went in, and you see the umpire, he was about to wave it wide, and then for some peculiar and bizarre reason, changed his mind, but it is 10-4, good buddy. Huge leap in the air by Brian Steins, but he's left it dropped down there, but he was fouled by Dermot Early, and it's a free to Dublin. About a minute to the break now. Stiles took it down and came early. Difficult to see where there was a foul there. Picked up by John Doyle. John Finn. And Paddle Andrews was pulling the jersey there of Paulick Brennan. And it's going to be a free in for Kildare. It's a scoring chance for them. And it could just be five between the teams heading into the interval. Coleman Goggins has uh, had a yellow card that's because it was his second foul first one he got his number taken for and the second foul of that particular nature resulted in the yellow that curls inside the left hand post and it's over the bar Paul Brennan's first and it's 10 points to 5 and Kildare fans feel that although they, they, though they played very poorly in the first half they're still there within touching distance of Dublin. Dublin have made 15 scoring chances. Kildare only nine. No goals so far. Few goal chances. Taken by Anthony Rainbow in injury time. Run back here again by Coleman Goggins. Brian Steins, support from Jim Gavin, 
Kieran Whelan curling forward. Crossing the 45 metre line. Going for the score himself. It's a magnificent point. Kieran Whelan second. Dublin lording it really. The half time break can't come quickly enough for Kildare, you feel. Four players involved in the build up and Whelan there at the completion. It's 11 points to five. Nico Duer will certainly have tell a few home shoots at half time inside that dressing room. But where does he start? They're being beaten all over the field. And the amazing thing is that they're only six points down at half time. Dublin might have had a few more points on the board, but Tom Carr has done his job well. And the team have responded and have Croke Park as they go in at half time in the Bank of Ireland Leinster final replay. It's Dublin 11, Kildare 5. Some of the Kildare supporters arrive late for this match. They might also be going home early. What can Kildare do in the second half? After the break, we're devastating in that first half, and Kildare were just devastated. Yes, it was a bit of a rout actually there for that first half, and uh, Dublin could nearly be out of sight at this stage. But their aggression, their physical strength, their support play, their foot passing, and their shooting has been excellent. And it's as good an exhibition of championship football probably as we have seen this year. Kildare in total disarray. Uh, the Dublin old guard, say, the likes of Curran and Steins and Whelan and Desi Farrell, are all playing outstandingly well, and Colin Moran is excellent as well. And their opposite numbers yes. on the Kildare team aren't in the game at all. So, like, you know, we can say, well, what Kildare do? Kildare must start getting the ball. Simple game, you can only play when you have the ball, and Kildare don't have the ball. There is a certain pattern about all this from the drawn match, with the exception of the scoreboard at halftime, Pat Spillane, which is that both sides started off very evenly the last day. Kildare got some lovely scores, and then they went into a trough, uh, and they've done that again, except this time the trough has been created for them by Dublin. I would beg to disagree with, with uh, Colm. Uh, if that's the best exhibition of championship football I've seen this year, uh, if, if, if it is the best Colm has seen, it's certainly not the best I've seen. It's a good performance by Dublin, but they're against a woeful and inept opposition an inept opposition where a forward line, not one of them could manage to score from play, but of course what's new with, with, with Kildare forwards? A team who continue to shot pass the ball, who take eight passes to get to a 50-yard line, a team who over-carry the ball, Christ, they're so easy to defend against, and like I said, they have two attacking options, the two corner forwards, very lively, but there's no point in playing the ball into two corners to two lively little corner forwards, because then they have to work it all the way back in again. So, very good performance well, by Dublin. Yeah, the, thing about, the thing about it is, Colin Moore, why is this the case with Kildare forwards? I mean, the Sheep Don and Connemara know this about them. Passing tourists in Kildare can shout in the windows at people, you can't score. They know this. Why don't they do something about it? Well, I suppose you have to cut your cloth to suit. And like Eddie McCormack, who was one of the heroes against Offaly and scored five points in one of those games, has been substituted again for the second game in a row. And he was one of their scoring forwards. So what does that leave you with? Mm. You know, so like Kildare obviously don't have the type of players that would fit into those positions that are able to get the ball go by their men and score, or that I'm sure Mick O'Dwyer but would have them. Carl O'Dwyer is on now, maybe he'll get a few points. You're left, with two, look, you're left with two square pegs and round holes and Dermot Erling and Ronis, we need their two centre fielders. Carl O'Dwyer has come on, Brian Murphy will come on. If Carl O'Dwyer was in Kerry, he wouldn't be making the Kerry Senior Championship side. If Brian Murphy was in Cork, he wouldn't be making the Cork Junior footballing side. Mm. So, I mean, OK, I don't know, the, the same problems. The defence is very good by Kildare Will Arbor, they'll never concede that many frees, but. Yeah. Judging by what we saw in the first half, they're not going to get any few scores sure. in trouble. Though. There but certainly wasn't any problem for Dublin scoring column in that first no. half, both the simple ones and the difficult ones. Yeah, well, the Kildare, the Kildare defence in a bit of disarray because when you see a fellow like Glenn Ryan in trouble, it shows. Now, that's uh, an example of Ken Dyle, who has done this a couple of times, lost possession, gave it away to Dublin through silly pass, and then it comes out to Brian Steins. First time football, kicks it over the bar. And Dublin have been very good at shooting in the sort of 35, 40 metre range. They only had two or three wides, and they had, in the first half an hour, they had 10 points from play. This is a great points. score. Yes. Well, Colin Moran has played a fantastic game, and he's not afraid to shoot. He's a confidence player, even though he's only about 20 years of age. And all of those men, there's a good spread of scores in that Dublin forward line as well. Okay. Well, what you see there, Michael, is... We gather, by the way, Brian Murphy is coming on for Ronan Sweeney, so they <laughs> The cock doing a football, as I say. <laughs> well, what you see there, I mean, in Kildare players have to blanket zone defence. Yes. Now, there's two, two ways of unhinging that. One, you play the long ball in, which means that the boys have to mark, and Dublin are brilliant today. They're playing the long ball in, the forwards are making good runs inside, they're creating the space and they're moving the ball along. There's one other disadvantage with the blanket defence, is that when you, when you put ten players behind, 
that means there's players up in support are behind. Now, you can see with Dublin, Dublin have their centre fielders up in support and they've got three points. So yeah. it's, they're, they're finding it hard to counteract the Dubs on all, on all angles. But like, going back to the forwards, look, the Dubs put Jay in full forward. He's not your typical full forward. What's wrong with, with putting Kildare, putting Tykes in and the Padres winning in full forward, playing the ball in shot? But look, they're a bit like the, those little Kildare forwards. A bit like the cock calling forwards last Sunday. Give them time and space, they'll put on an exhibition. Close down the space and possession comes badly and, and they have difficulty. Okay, gentlemen, it might or might not make any difference in the end, depending on what the, how the score remains, but there was this disputed point, Colin, in that first half. We're going to have a little look at this again. First of all, look at the reaction of the two umpires here when yeah. Desi put it over. Well, de or Desi didn't put it or over. Didn't <laughs> case, maybe, yeah. Well, the umpire seems about to signal uh, the ball going wide, then changes his mind. He was actually in a good position. The man on this side... It has signalled a wide, so you had a two-to-one situation, one umpire and one referee yeah. against one the other. The problem was there was no consultation, obviously, between the two umpires. No. They both uh, no. signalled at the same time. But it it, it, where Desi Farrell shot from actually showed how the Dublin forwards are moving well, because Desi is running from the r his right corner across to the other side, and J.O. is making the run into his corner, and the yeah. Kildare yeah, back seem to be getting caught with it all the time, and especially as the two of them are there, they're moving across the line. And Still, if I had Ronan Quinn Mack in me, I, 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 I think I'd beat him for pace as well. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a, he, he's, he's a fish out of water there in cornerback. He's slow, ponderous at fullback, and he's even slower and more ponderous at cornerback. You, beat him, you beat him in a run up to the counter anyway. For the next sure round. <laughs> anyway, listen, there, there are six points down kid there. Okay, yes. it's, it's a problem, but the game isn't over. But how no. can they turn it around? Well, the game is not over. Like Dublin have put on one of the, the, their better displays for quite a while. This is as good a Dublin display yeah. for five years in championship football. Yeah. But Kildare don't ever give up now. Yeah, so what we're going to see is, I'd say, the likes of Glenn Ryan and Anthony Rainbow and John Finn yeah. pouring forward. It may be yeah. into cul-de-sacs, but at this stage, you'd have to say, Dublin, unless they collapse... Pat doesn't agree that you'll see that. I know I do, actually. I, I mean, yeah. this, this Kildare team, one thing they have is, is character. They've come through close battles. They, they came from behind against Louth. They, they won the replay against Offaly. They're well used to close battles, and, and, and we can't write them off. OK, we certainly can't write them off, but uh, certainly it's been Dublin for the first half. There's no question at all about that. No wonder Brian Steins is smiling. Let's rejoin Ger and Tony. Right back here, just six points between the teams in spite of Dublin's dominance. Brian Murphy, the former Cork underage player, the man who scored the all-important winning goal against Meath two years ago in the Leinster final, is in it full forward. He replaces Ronan Sweeney. And the referee, Pat McEnany, getting the second half underway. But again, we stress that there is little or no breeze around this afternoon. Kildare need to make a good start. Here's Carol O'Dwyer, he started on the 40. Murphy's got it to full forward. It's McCreary and Early at midfield. Here's Torek Brennan. They only had nine shots on the target in the first half, scoring from five. They look to build it up here. And Linchester, oh, they've got a goal! Oh, have they? In fact, it's down at Early. Early's gone through. And Early has scored. A goal in the very first minute of the second half. It was fed in to Dermot Early, and he buried it underneath Davy Byrne's body. What a start. It's exactly what the game required. It's exactly what Kildare have needed. And Dermot Early takes all of the credit. After a very poor first half, he's given the Lily Whites great hope. Three points now separate the teams. As they say in the Air Corps, we have liftoff. McQuarrie for John Doyle. Forward once again. This time it is Martin Lynch. Played ahead once again. Brian Murphy has another chance. Run away from him. Fed inside. And Fedden has scored. Tight Fedden. Two goals in the space of a minute. The teams are level. It's an incredible match. What a start. The team talk must have been exquisite. That goal certainly was. And the sides are level for the fourth time in this match. Tyg Fennan following up the goal of Dermot Early. Forget the halftime team talk because now they're level. How could you talk logically and analyse a game like this when we were talking about Kildare? <laughs> it just defy all logic. It's amazing, absolutely amazing. Davy Byrne, 
Martin Lynch, gathered here by Dermot Early. His goal set it all up. It's like a side has got new batteries for the second 35 minutes. This will really, really test Dublin special at this stage. Psychologically, they have been knocked down on the floor twice now in two minutes. We'll really see what they're made of now. Sam Connell has had his number recorded. Willie McCurry was dragged back by Brian Steins. And Steins also getting the number taken by referee Pat McEnany from Monaghan, who of course was in charge of the 1996 All-Ireland Football Final. Paulick Brennan about to hit this one. Dropped in dangerously, gathered in there well. And Paddy Christie takes it away for Dublin. Out to Paul Cullen. Away they come, Jonathan McGee. Cut out here, however, cut out well. This is Dermot Early. Over the head of Brian Steins, inside for Carol O'Dwyer. Back to Willie McCreary. Early was on the ground just inside him. Back on his feet, McCreary looking to give Kildare the lead, but failing to do so. Now they led at the very beginning of the game. They had a very, very barren period. They were very badly rocked, and right now the team rocked are Dublin. John O'Leary and Tom Carr there in conversation. Has he worked the oracle yet again? Taken down here well by Kieran Whelan. Paul Curran. The man he's targeting is Jason Sherlock. Going by Ken Doyle. Having to go back and try once again. Jim Gavin back to Brian Steins. A couple of misses towards the end of the first half. This one has dropped badly short. Easy one for Christy Byrne. Glenn Ryan. Martin Lynch, very deep indeed. Ryan again. Showing us his rugged nature. International player, of course, with the Irish international team. And quite a few of these, I'm sure, will be in Brian McInnitch's side in October. Vinnie Murphy has had the yellow card issued to him. So it's going to be a free kick, which uh, Glenn Ryan will take. Dermot Early, when he fell that time, I think he twisted his ankle, so it might be worth keeping an eye on him for the next couple of minutes. Not motoring all that fully. And the man who stopped the motoring that time was uh, Sam and Connell. Willie McCreary was trying to come through. So it's going to be a free kick. And in fact, the ball has been brought forward an extra 13 metres because... Dublin did not retreat quickly enough. That's the 45 metre line. 51,156 are present here. They've all finally made it. Torek Brennan. And he's kicked it very badly wide. Didn't approach that with any great deal of confidence. And in a way, Kildare can afford to relax a little bit at this stage because they've come right back into the game. They're level after all. Sure, I don't know any good club team that hasn't a footballer that can kick a ball over from 45. It should merely be a score straight away. All those misses are costly. And there have been quite a few of them in this match. Steins fisting it back down. Jonathan McGee back towards Kieran Whelan. Going forward with great determination and purpose. Robbed by Dermot Early. Happily recovered from that ankle injury. First of the goal scorers for Kildare. John Finn. Down towards Boric Brennan. Cutting it out, however, is Coleman Goggins. There's support available to him. Jonathan McGee. Jim Gavin now. Thought about the pass to Seven Connell. Towards... Desi Farrell had a really good first half. Brian Lacey trying to close him down, dragging him right out to the corner there. Still Desi Farrell. 
Gavin's available for the cross. In the end, the pressure plays off. Kildare managed to get it back. Glenn Ryan. Bad pass. Straight to Paul Curran. And there's a huge space available on the left-hand side. Stein's popping up there. Should go for the score. Plays it instead. Towards the corner forward, Colly Morland. And Morland, under pressure, has kicked it wide. There was a better chance for Stein's just moments ago to have taken the chance. Kickout's taken very quickly. As we're watching reprise once again, we can see the pressure from the Kildare backline. They kicked it out very fast. This is where they are. Martin Lynch going forward. A real hit and hope one that in the end went absolutely nowhere. And it was Ken Doyle who shot it. Ken from Allenwood. The hill a little bit more silent at the start of the second half. Absolutely rocked by the concession of two goals in the space of 90 seconds. The first from Dermot Early, the second from Tyke Fennin. A real body blow to Tom Carr and company. But he has teed up this Leinster final beautifully. Well gathered by Derek Andrews. But Pato Andrews leaving it behind her in the end to Willie McCreary. Great run by McCreary, stands out for him, he's fouled and it's going to be a free in. Free to Kildare. They shouldn't have fallen him if I was at the back in there, I'd nearly have lifted him shoot with the record that, that Kildare is shooting at the moment. Just put him under pressure and let him shoot. Well, here comes the uh, pressure kick. And that one has gone over the bar. Scored by Paul Brennan. It's just his second pointed free. And Kildare are 2 6 to 11 points. They lead by one. With the left foot, he effortlessly kicked it over this time. One or two things happening off the ball you were looking at? Yes, uh, Jason Sherlock is having a ding down battle in there in the corner. But like at this stage, Dublin should only keep their head down and weather the storm because overall, so far, they have been the better team. Brad Steins beautifully held on to. Back to Senan Connell. Paul Curran, he's got but credit Brian Lacey. Lacey stepping into the breach that time because otherwise Dublin would be straight in on goal. Former Tipperary player, of course. This is back to Paul Curran. Having a pot himself. Christy Byrne doing well. Played out here as far as Dermot Early. Back there in front of his own goal. Adventurous but dangerous. Carol Eduardo. Martin Lynch coming forward. Brian Stein's trying to put in the challenge. It's still Lynch being roared on by the Kildare faithful. Carol Eduardo now. Former Kerry player, son of the manager, and he's belted it poorly to the right and wide. I think Martin Lynch used his elbow there, Joe. There's no doubt about it, but he's given the belt back. Yes, definitely. He'd be lucky to stay on the field, Joe. Well, let's see what the referee is going to do. No McCaffrey attending to Brian Steins. Martin Lynch about to be spoken to by the referee. What is going to be the colour of the card? 12 minutes into the second half. It's yellow. He's fortunate. That's where he used the elbow right into the face of Brian Steins. He's very lucky to stay on the field. Very lucky. And fair play to Brian Steins. He got up and got on with it. Made no histronics whatsoever. And the Sheehy has been warmed up on the far side. If he could use the term warmed up on a pretty humid afternoon. Early fouled as he played the ball away and it's going to be a free in for Kildare this was early on his hands and knees down he went and the right boot ended up on his head as well question of intent I suppose is the major factor 
as we watch Ender Sheehy come into the Dublin team. Still looking around to see just who's uh, making their way off. And it's going to be Sen and Connell. He was substituted in the drawn match as well. That's played inside there. Brian Murphy falling on the ball, touching it on the ground, and it's a free out to Dublin. Pressure back on the Kildare backline. They're having much the better of the second half. They started very brightly. And those two goals have done wonders for their morale and confidence. But that is a desperate pass inside by Martin Lynch. You could read his intent, Brian Murphy is in, in on the edge of the square, but that's not the type of ball he wants. He wants ball in in front of him, not high scooped balls kicking wide of the post. He wants it in the danger area, right in front of him. And the Sheehy is in there, operating around the midfield area. He's being marked by Willie McCreary right now. Bit of restructuring done by Dublin. Dermot Ari was trying to hold on to that one, but instead it's Martin Lynch, three dubs alongside him. Pull down, free him to Kildare. It's a fierce battle right now. You can see it on the faces of the spectators in the background. Pater Andrews was chasing after him, so was Enver Sheehy. Quite a few steps taken. So free in to Kildare. They bring out Paulie Brennan to take it. Played inside towards Tyke Fennan, pushed in the back. It's going to be another free in. Obviously pushed him in the back turn, and again it's a tap over free, and that shows very much lack of discipline by the Dublin defenders. All he had to do was hold them up because in their followers, as we know, aren't famous for kicking balls in the fresh from 30 yards, and all you have to do is hold them up and put them on the back in the fresh. Boric Brennan, two from three so far with a freeze, and he's got another one. Three pointed threes then. All of them vital for Kildare. The fans delighted. Brennan on target once again. Floating this one in and over the bar. And Mikko is the happier manager. But how a match can change. Remember the situation heading up to about four o'clock? So Dublin still looking for their first point or points of the second half. And 15 minutes are gone. Steins. That was intended for Colin Moran. Instead, it's Anthony Rainbow. Cross there towards Brian Murphy. Back to Carol O'Dwyer. Martin Lynch was moving ahead of him. Early is to his left. Ooh, and instead, he's given it away to Powder Andrews of St. Bridget's in Dublin. Useful pass inside towards Farrell. Played back here. Jim Gavin. They look for the score, and it's blocked down, and it's taken away. Great play there by Ken Doyle. Glenn Ryan holding it up. Saw it towards Martin Lynch. Jonathan McGee just got a touch in it, but Dublin came really close there. Good defending by Mikko's team. Dublin are after moving Jonathan McGee over Martin Lynch. Uh, Glenn Ryan and Martin Lynch are coming in more in the game, though, and Dublin really see that with Jonathan McGee over on him. That's fisted down there by Goggins, comes back to John Doyle, and Doyle drops it off the post. He was really out of luck. Dublin get it back, also get a let off. Paul Curran thought about the pass to Jim Gavin. Instead, it's Polly Moran, two points in the game so far, both of them from play. This is one back by Ken Doyle again. He's had an excellent match. Glenn Ryan early trying to get there with Martin Lynch and winning the duel over there is Jonathan McGee and he's fouled and it's going to be a free for Dublin McGee has had a great last couple of years at club and at county level and Martin Lynch is he been called across and the referee may have just had a quick word with him it's a free to Dublin
that's booted in there Vinnie Murphy right on the end line played it sensibly back out towards Jim Gavin Gavin still running into cold the sacks Kildare have shown greater method and understanding in the second half they've defended valiantly and with discipline but Martin Lynch, the number 18 pitcher there, he needs to be very disciplined. He's had a yellow card against him. Willie McQuarrie there, puzzled by the decision. It's a travelling violation, as it were. Jonathan McGee is having an outstanding game over there. He's a lot of weight down in the middle and stopping Kildare coming forward at all times. Kieran Whelan. It breaks down to Paul Curran. The Dubs at this stage of the game trailing by two points and they get themselves a free in and a chance perhaps of their first point of the second half and we're already in the 18th minute of the second half here comes Paul Curran once again fouled and John Doyle for that has his number taken this kick by Jim Gavin is very wayward a bad miss, a poor kick. Well, they've had their problems with free takers. That time, Tom Carr would have realised that it suited Jim Gavin to hit him with a left boot, but he didn't make it, and it could be a very costly miss. Both teams are missing some crucial throws. Ball. I think the difference of this half is that Kildare are putting Dublin under pressure at midfield. So therefore they can't take their passes to the inside forwards. Who would have given Kildare much of a chance at half time? Trailing by six, but hopelessly out of the game. But those two crucial goals have brought them right back into it in a very meaningful way. Jim Gavin again. And it's stopped by Christy Byrne. Comes back towards Colin Moore and touched on the ground, or was it? And in the end, kicked in by Desi Farrell. And it's gone wide. Dear, oh dear. They've had some chances. Well, the ball seemed to be touched on the ground just before all of that. In the end, it was picked up by Desi Farrell, and in the end, he missed it. I think it was perhaps Vinnie Murphy who was the one who handled the ball on the ground. They get a chance of seeing it once again here. Yeah. Looked like it was taken off the ground. Kildare have it back. It's Dermot Early. On to Willie McCreary. Here's a scoring chance. Pater Andrews is after him. That's a dreadful miss. We've seen some awful misses. Darren Holman is coming into the Dublin team as we watch McCreary once again steady himself here, Pader Andrews was his marker but really he should have scored it. so Darren Holman is on and Jim Gavin is off costly costly misses by both teams but it's still a tight match Kildare with their 2-7 that's uh, 13 points 11 for Dublin Brian Murphy into Tyke Fennin Ahead towards John Doyle, but it's a difficult one. Johnny McGee is across there. McGee's played well. But that was a poor ball that he was anticipating. Inside for Darren Homan. And they usually use as a substitute player. Colly Moore is beaten for this one by Glenn Ryan. Good anticipation. Ken Doyle feeding it back here. Dermot Early threading it out. Brian Lacey challenged by Kieran Whelan Lacey still the safe ball to give was to John Finn taking it away from Vinnie Murphy and from Brian Steins Holman is next in with the challenge picking it up very decisively is Anthony Rainbow inside for Martin Lynch suddenly a gap opened up just momentarily and the kick from Paulie Brennan has gone over the bar for his fourth point very good finishing. And the fans of Kildare are looking for a first Leinster final victory since 1928 over the old rivals of Dublin. 
Champions two years ago, of course, when they beat Mead, but they'd love to beat the Dubs. Right now they lead by 2-8 to 11 points. That's a lead of three points. 12 and a half minutes remain. Steins can't hold it. It's Rainbow instead. This is a massive transformation. Kildare lording it. John Doyle. He's gone straight through. Everybody after him. He had a point for the taking. He's got a 45 instead. I presume on his mind he was thinking in terms of burying it in the back of Davy Burns' goal. Eased up maybe just a fraction. Might have popped it over at this point here. Didn't do so. There was a block on it, and it's a 45. That was terrific defending again by Paddle Andrews, having another great game today. Uh, he did the right thing, he didn't foul, threw himself across it, and the forward at that stage had to shoot, so very, 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 very good defending. We've seen his character in the last couple of matches after that wretched game in the Leinster final last year, when he was up against Ollie Murphy. A bit like Kevin Keenan, I suppose, seven days ago. Terrible first half, wonderful second. Just shows the great characters these great players possess. Finn, belted in, taken by Murphy. Over his head and he's kicked it over the bar. Brian Murphy gets his first. Kildare fans are really enjoying the second 35 minutes. 24 minutes are gone in the second half. Dublin have not scored. And Brian Murphy put it over his head and popped it over the bar. Are Kildare on their way? Looking today to win a 13th Leinster title. Brian Steins. Now it's the Dubs who need a goal. They certainly need a couple of quick scores. Paul Curran. Holding up the point of the attack. But going right into the corner. Rainbow's after him. Here's Collie Moran. This is played nicely across. Holman pumping it in still about there and in the end it's gone for a 45 desperation stakes back there for the Kildare back division Pat McEnany keeping a very tight rein on the match as that was hit in high there Vinnie Murphy was about and Willie McCreary I think maybe a bit the last one to touch it off his knee David Hughes is just after joining the Kildare team. And Thomas Lynch, or Tom Lynch, as they call him, has come in for Dublin. Meanwhile, the 45 hit by Jonathan McGee. Fisted around the place in there. Still opportunities. Colly Moran has put it over the bar. At last, Dublin got a score. It's Moran's third point of the match equaling his tally in the original game. Three between them. Shane Ryan is just making his way off the Dublin team. And Tom O'Lynch has come in there into that full back line. This is the point just moments ago here. Hit in beautifully by Colin Moran. No wondering, can they still do it? There's time, nine minutes. Christy Burns kick out. Not particularly high. Rainbow's fouled, however, by Paul Curran. Dermot Early. John Finn has gone off the Kildare team. Coleman Goggins going short this time. And the Sheehy. Brian Stiles was calling for it. They go to Paddy Christie instead. Now it's Steins. This is the new man in, Tom O'Lynch. And they're playing it very short, almost Kildare style. Up towards Vinnie Murphy. Bounces loose towards Ke Almost gifted to Brian Lacey. At the second time he gets it up. Chased by Murphy. Now Dermot Early, bad ball, Dublin come forward again, Collie Moran, drilling this one, but that 
was a ball he could have played in good options. There was no need to balloon it in that fashion. Good pass ahead to him. Now there was support inside, but he went for glory to some extent. Short kick out once again. In this half, so can they retain the ball long because they have Brian Murphy in full forward and every ball Brian has got, he's utilised it very well and Dublin have a very, very slow build-up and they're being caught all the time. Here comes Dermot Early. Martin Lynch is alongside him. They're so alike, at least from this distance. There was a push and it's going to be a free to Dublin. They need everything. Darren Holman towards Jason Sherlock. Not as prominent this afternoon. Certainly not in the second half. Down towards Martin Lynch. Can he get another score here? Always good for a couple, but he's put this one outside the right-hand post. And the wides mount up. That's nine wides now for Kildare. For Dublin, it's eight so far. Six and a half minutes left. Which of these teams will go through as champions of Leinster to face Galway in the Bank of Ireland football semi-final? Enda Sheehy. Paul Curran now. Lovely change of direction. John Doyle's back there tracking him. Lobbed high, but uh, not with the necessary direction. First half there was people moving at all angles in the inside forward line, they're just not doing it at the moment. When Paul Corn came forward twice now, he had no option but to shoot. Well we've seen Colin Moran do it a little while ago and Paul Curran now. You just begin to wonder have they still got that confidence and faith in their ability to lift the trophy. They were well on top for 35 minutes. And this time it's a throw rather than a legitimate hand pass. Ender Sheehy disappointed, but it'll be a free to Kildare. Up and down the uh, ground he goes, calling out the instructions, playing the game like a 16th man. And Dublin are bringing in a fresh man into the uh, team. It looks like it's going to be... Uh, Wayne McCarthy has come on and Billy Murphy's gone off a huge hit of hope on downfield and the Sheehy again Dublin with only five minutes left to try and snatch this game Glenn Ryan his side ahead by three points and in case you come in and joined us late Kildare who trailed by six points at half time got two goals in the opening minute and a half of the second half by Early and by Fennin to level the match at that stage and they've more or less taken a firm grip Certainly Dublin's command of the game more or less disintegrated, fell apart during the last half an hour. Again, Joe, that was a silly free to give away. He was in no danger out there in the corner. All he had to do was shepherd him onto his weak leg and keep him out there. But all he has to do now is flip it over from 35 metres out and they've got their four points away. It's Porrick Brennan once again. Usual result. He's got five points. Four of those, I think, have come from freeze this afternoon. One from play. Delighted Kildare fans. And they lead by four points, as you see. It looks like being their day. But have we spoken too soon? And she who can't gather. Instead, it's Carol O'Dwyer. Inside to Brian Murphy. Willie McQuarrie chasing after him, Tom O'Lynch holding it up there, going for the score, and that's a nice one. He punches the air, Willie McQuarrie getting his second point of this Leinster final replay. Delirious Kildare fans, 
in the start of the 90s. Dublin always seemed to be their bogey team, but they beat them in the championship in 98, and they look like they're going to beat them in the final this year. They've got a five-point advantage. Pader Andrews, his defeat to be his lot once again. Dublin will fight to the end. Brian Stein's going through. He's fouled. Free in. Referee with the uh, notebook out. And it's a yellow card for Tyke Fennan. Tyke, who's a bank official. Won't worry too much about that if he's got a Leinster medal in his back pocket by the end of the day. Desi Farrell has hit it hopelessly right. Their free-taking, once again, has been very, very poor. Tom Carr with a resigned look in his face. So true for the fans up on the hill. And the referee has uh, called over Colin Moran there to have a word with him. And it's a bit more than that. It's another yellow card. It just shows the frustration of Dublin. Again, that should have been a point. With only a few minutes left, it was vital, like I say, for to get that, and the game has just slipped away from it. I mean, we should emphasise again, there's no real breeze around this afternoon, and Dublin have only scored one point in the entire second half. Dermot Early. You can see the Kildare players now by the approach they have to this game, lifted by those two goals early on in the second half, and by the uh, strong cup of tea that Mikko will have given them during the half-time break. Anthony Rainbow disappointed. They look like they've got it. We're in the last minute. Difficult to see how Dublin can make it up here. Dublin with 27 scoring chances, the identical tally as Kildare. I mean, we all hate talking about the, the game of two halves, but how else do you describe this? It's impossible to describe it because at halftime you could not see Kildare coming back into it. But they were dreadful in the first half. Absolutely dreadful. And Dublin are dreadful in the second half. And some of those kicks are dreadful. But it's it's just impossible to explain how a Kildare team could score goals. They haven't scored any goal in the championship so far this year, Harley. They're, they're not noted for scoring goals. And you get two simple goals like that. The great man, I think, has done it again. Mick O'Dwyer. Darren Holman. Of course, Kildare will be thinking about, wouldn't it be nice to have that rematch with Galway and 98 all over again? Dublin have the free kick, however. The match is into injury time. Darren Holman pumping it in high this time. Brian Steins is about, they're all about in there. Colin Moran, but so too is Martin Lynch. Brian Lacey getting it out here to Ken Doyle motoring along inside there David Hughes in the end it's uh, Dublin's possession but the time is almost up Kildare who in the past have won four All-Ireland football titles look like they're into the All-Ireland semi-final and the All-Ireland series per se that's going to be a free Colin Moran goes down Dolan from storming ahead, Tom Lynch is around the place. Still Kildare tried to deny Dublin in every way possible. And it's got to be a free down in spite of Tom Lynch's persistence there on the edge of the large rectangle. The Kildare fans up out of their seats cheering, chanting. I'm sure they'll go wild all over Kildare again. They've seen their team come Phoenix-like during the second half. Christy Byrne in no particular hurry, playing in his 10th championship match. He's seen it all before, but this man has seen it all with Kerry, with Kildare. And Kildare are this year's Leinster football champions. An amazing comeback. Carol O'Dwyer goes to his father, Mikko. And between them, they have helped Kildare to their 13th ever Leinster football title. They saluted. Well, they might. 
whatever he said at half time my goodness me it should be put on tape or in book form and given to all the sports psychologists Tom Carr crestfallen Miko elated the photographers try to get the pictures that will adorn our newspapers tomorrow morning there is absolute despair for Paddy Christie and the rest of the Dublin players so close the last time but in the replay it's Kildare who have prevailed and they've done it in some style thanks to early second half goals by Dermot Early first of all and then Tyke Fennin they got a boost they got a huge lift at that stage it drew them level they seem to be going absolutely nowhere but they've come storming back and shown us that you have to play for the full 70 minutes but the Leinster crown is theirs they've won it by 2-11 17 points to Dublin's 12 Dublin with just one point in the entire second half let's go down to Marty Morrissey thank you very much to Carlo Dwyer and John Doyle are with me what a performance what a second half performance Carl yeah it was great Marty I thought in half time we couldn't get any worse than fair teams were going really bad for it you know and we just sat down and addressed and we took it easy they no roaring or so and you said we can play a lot better than that like and I think in a second we got a fantastic start we got two goals in two minutes or something like and if that doesn't lift any team losing really you know what did dad say at half time oh, he didn't say too much he just said we hadn't played like you know I mean he could have been mad as well but I mean it doesn't it was not only we knew ourselves we didn't play well like but I mean I didn't second half performance speak for itself you know well was there any particular incident or anything at all that even that happened at half time just switched your whole attitude nothing I just said was the first goal by Damon early you know I mean we got a goal straight away yeah. I mean if that doesn't lift you nothing will and that really got us going and we got the second goal quickly after well, well done yeah, congratulations Carl John Doyle can you explain Kildare's victory today because it's unbelievable Marty that's unbelievable stuff I mean we went in at half time and we were five or six points down but we knew in our hearts and souls we were well capable of winning the game you know we got two great goals at the start I mean as Carl said if that doesn't lift the team does nothing well you know we're throw this is unbelievable I can't believe it you're heading for a clash with the uh, for, for a repeat of the All-Ireland final of 98 yes we we always you know we were very disappointed in 98 and we're looking forward to getting another clash with Galway and I'm sure they're the same Marty thanks very much thank you well done John yes very delighted uh, Kildare players there and now it's time for the presentation which is taking place out in the centre of the park all terribly unusual but then coming to Croke Park this year has been a bit unusual with the building program there's Seamus Aldridge one Kildare man about to give the trophy to another as a Kildare man to present this cup to a club mate and fellow county man and we were born in the same street what I have to be neutral. <laughs> I'd like to commiserate totally with the Dublin team on their excellent and gallant performance. Beg la ella aguim, akan la sha la kildara. Enish nila yena vandam akan karna brana, er glen reen, akar gush, bawala mara. Sympathy with Glenn's family. It may not be known, but Glenn lost his uncle in the last 24 hours, and yet he gave his utmost to Kildare today. Anish Boalam and Karna Bruno are Glenn Ryan. Yes, it's Kildare's day. Glenn Ryan lifting the trophy. Mikko in the background. Seamus Aldridge, a very neutral Kildare man. Kildare are once again the Leinster champions. So it's going to be Kildare against time. And of course, more live action tomorrow afternoon. Kilkenny play against Galway, semi final of the Guinness Hurling Championship. Winter the hair in August. Winter and so he parky crocky. August winter Kildare. Toss. 
on down Durham, on Corn So, Corline, a Harling Terras, go Kondi Kildara, a race. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody associated with this, this team. Two years ago, we kept us here a long time, but we had a long time to wait then. Thankfully, don't. we didn't have as long to wait for a second one. I would, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody who's here today that's associated with this team from the best supporters in the world. To, to our fantastic medical staff, Dr. Danny Mulvihill and Ian Murahertig and Pam Malini, who all have looked after us tremendously over the last not much. To, to, to all the ladies who look after us out in Hallfield and everybody who's looked after pitches for us and everybody associated with the team, I'd like to say it very, thanks very much. Um, we have some marvellous people in Kildare. Two of the best would be the selectors we have at the moment. John Joe Walsh, who is a, a long-term servant in Kildare football. And a man who is, who is here to my own heart and has gone through an awful lot of himself in club football and has gone through things that nobody else would even dream about. Paddy Byrne, I'm the best, Paddy. I'd like to thank our fantastic team. I'm sure a lot of people had it written off at half time. But there's not more to this team that meets the eye and each and every one is our fantastic bunch of lads. I would just also like to um, say hello to some family members of mine back home. My mother and father um, and all my relations, Joan, Paul, Kevin, Kira, and, and Roisin, the rest of the family, for taking it all. Um, I'd, like, I'd like to thank all the people who support us, from girlfriends and wives and parents and everybody who has gone to all sorts of lengths to make sure that we're all talked out properly here and support us in every way. I'd like to thank our sponsors, Tegrin, who have really come up trumps this year, and the county board at a time when it seems to be the thing to give out about county boards. I think we, Sir Richie Whelan and Andrew, they've looked after us and set the standard for all the rest. Um, there's one more man, we all know who he is. He's given this county unbelievable. Well, certainly, Glenn Ryan is enjoying himself down there, thanking everybody and anybody. But the man they'll be looking to is this man here, Mikko Dohan. Mikko, ex explain to me, Mikko. <laughs> explain to me, Mikko, the transformation of your team at the second half. Well, the level of fitness that we have in that team, I think, you know. The level of fitness we have in that team, I think, is second to none in any team in the country. Even when we went six points down, I was saying, lads, we must get out, we must win this one. Whatever else, we did it against Offaly and said we can do it here. We went six points down against Offaly and we came back to win as well. They did the very same thing today. I thought they were fantastic and they played their hacks out. And, uh, I mean, this killed their team. They don't know when to stop running and I think that's what won for us today. But the, nobody could have expected what you did in the second half when you analyse the first half. Well, I suppose a lot of people can't expect what we do a lot of the times. We kick 19 points against Loud, we cut it down to about 11, and then we cut it down to four. We had a few wides today, but we got some great scores as well. But believable, and they're a marvellous team. And if the people of this country don't like the brand of football that we play, I'm sorry for them. It's a wonderful day for Kildare, but, and I know it is very, very early and unfair to ask you, but just... You're setting up now for an All-Ireland semi-final against the team that beat you in 98. <laughs> yeah, Gal Galway are an exceptionally good team. There's no question or doubt about that. We know the value of Galway. 
but it's going to be another titanic struggle here in Crow Park in two weeks' time. So we're looking forward to it. Well done, Mick, and congratulations to everybody in Kildare. In the pleasure. Well, if Colin Murray is on the sports news tonight, it certainly will be drama in Crow Park. And Alice possibly have predicted that at half time. And also, as Marty was saying there, an All Ireland semi final between the All Ireland finalists of 1998, Galway and Kildare. And what a game that should be as well, and one that we're certainly really, really looking forward to. But for the moment, please, Kildare supporters, it's just today and our second Leinster trophy in three years to Sager. And certainly it's a match that uh, all of us watching this one will have enjoyed, I think. It's a dramatic turnaround, obviously, by Kildare. And joining it with me in the studio are Pat Spillane and Colin Rourke, their opinions coming up in a moment. But well, here are the stats from that match. Quite a lot of frees as it turned out in the game. 27 frees to Kildare, 18 to Dublin. That's pretty huge, and yet it seemed to be a reasonably free-flowing game. 10 wides to Dublin, 9 wides to Kildare. Uh, 3.45 is the match, and then there were 6 yellow cards at the end of the day. No red cards, and perhaps one or two players might have considered themselves fortunate that one of those 6 yellows uh, hadn't been turned into a different colour. Well, Pat Spillane, I suppose, if this was a boxing match, you could put it in terms of, of Dublin being the better boxer. And then they took this sucker punch, I suppose, and the, and the knees just seemed to go. They did, and, and Dublin never recovered from it, you know. They, they went in at half-time, six points up. Obviously, the, the team talk was all about containing Kildare, but, I mean, there was no script prepared for that. And uh, you could see the Dublin heads going down. And in the second half, look, Kildare, it was, like I said, it, it was a game of two halves. Last... last in the, in the drawn game, we had a game of two halves where one, the first half was average and the second half was excellent. Today, you had a game of two halves where in the first half, Dublin played all the football and in the second half, they said, right, Kildare, you can play the style of football, which they did. They played the ball at pace, they moved the ball direct, they gave over the shot passing, they gave over the overcarrying the ball and their fitness, as Mikko showed, their fitness was superb. They won, they got control of the middle field, picked up all the breaks and like the cock colours last week, you can have the best forwards in the world, but if the supply isn't coming in, and today you saw in the second half, Kildare won the midfield battle, and even when they lost possession, the, the supply that came in from the dubs was very, very, very poor. And any team that can only get one score in 35 minutes in the second half doesn't deserve to win. So credit, well done, Kildare. Absolutely. I mean, congratulations to them. And by the way, we did say at half time that they had a good chance. I said they weren't good <laughs> enough, by the way. <laughs> but the thing about it is, Colin Brook, I mean, you can analyse this game until you get dizzy in your head. But the reality of it is, the two goals, they wanted to do a fluke, but the two goals, let's say, were fortunate to come uh, so early in the game, and this was the, the key to it. Yes, there's no doubt about that. A, a goal in a situation like this is what would be worth more than three points to Kildare because of the lift that it gave them. Corey Friend does very well and gets the ball into Dermot Early. I thought Brennan might have been called back for overcarrying the ball, but Dermot Early did something that he has failed to do.